Welcome to the Spiritual Roundtable, where we're about to break down, discuss, unpack, and challenge pretty much anything spiritual. Together, we're going to embark on a journey of unlocking spiritual potential through a ton of things like healing, balance, oneness, devil's advocate, and so much more. We always promise to give you what you need, and only sometimes what you want. I'm your host, Erica M., Child of Balance, and here with me, my co-host, is Miss Erin M., Tease of Wisdom 369. <laughs> Come join us today as we talk and debunk meditation. What you think it is probably actually isn't what it actually is. We're going to go through it all. Come and join us. Alrighty, so back by popular demand. A lot of people have been asking us continuous questions about meditation and meditative states of being or awareness or of self. I'm going to tell you from one person to another, like, it's just not that hard. And you will hear me say that all the time in a lot of things that we do on this planet, not even just this journey, not even spirituality, like we make it harder than it needs to be. And it's partly not your fault, but it's entirely your fault. And I say it's partly not your fault because the way, you know, like the way it's taught can be misleading, right? Because the 99% of the time when you first learn about meditation, what's the very first thing that modern you know, society has you think? They have you think sitting down, cross, crisscross applesauce on the floor with maybe your hands in some kind of symbol or or configuration and we're oming our life away. Oh, like, right. If you think of this larger than life yogi perspective, right. To where it's like, I'm sitting on my mountain. I am a Zen Buddha. And this is what I do 40 hours a day. Like, but that's not everybody's realistic meditation. And then a lot of people hold that construct as this is meditating. That's a form of meditation. Yes. Very valuable. Very good things can be had from that form of meditation, not downplaying it. However, it's also taught backwards. People tell you, what's the first thing? I mean, you just freaking Google meditation, what's the first thing? It's literally like, sit down, clear, yeah, path to enlightenment, sit down, clear your mind of all thoughts, er, er, red flag, big truck horn, stop. Like, just, no, you done wrong, you fucked up from the beginning. Because anybody who has trouble especially if you're upper dantian heavy if you are an overthinker if your brain's always active you always have inner monologue if you're always on a tangent if you have add adhd maybe you got a processing disorder it doesn't really matter you know what's going to be super hard for you to turn the bus off that is grand central station of your mind so when they tell you to start with quiet your mind they're setting you up for failure. I love you so much that I'm telling you they're setting you up for failure and they don't mean to. It's just that your ass is going to take that literal and go, I need to have an empty void that is my head. That's not necessarily what they're talking about. And unless it's broken down, that's a common misconception. Like girl, guy, dude, fella, my man, my lady, you're not alone. It's a misconception. It's just because it's taught slightly kind of you know, it's taught in this over overdone perspective, right? But what does that mean for the average person, for the waitress that runs around in chaos all day, for the mom of four kids? Like, what does that actually mean for the mother doing two jobs, for the father who's coming off of work? Like, what does that actually mean for the teenager who has so much shit in their life, they just can't get it together, right? Like, there's the like glorified perspective of our rosy glasses of, hmm, and the trees are talking to me. And then there's like the logistic perspective of like, I just need five minutes of quiet. So I'm going to try to recenter myself. I'm going to try to ground myself. So I just need to go and like five seconds for me in meditation, right? There's a difference in perspective and in viewpoint. When they're telling you to quiet your mind as step one, they're telling you to do the results of meditation, but do it first to gain meditative practice. It is wild. They are giving you the product of years, months, weeks of dedicated, quiet yeah. time with self. And they're telling you to do that first in order to do it correctly. It's wild. For most people who have never meditated, sitting five minutes, if I were to start a timer and I told you, quiet your mind for five minutes, 
and I told you to count every time something flew in your mind and your mind wasn't exactly still quiet or present, you would have a whole page. You'd be like, I have 25 things and it's only been five minutes. And actually I looked at the clock. I thought it was five. It was two and a half minutes. This is wild. And you just start realizing how active you really are. It's not about making dead space. It's not about emptying your mind. When you're just beginning for the beginner who is learning to meditate or the practice of presence, because that's really what it's going to become for the beginner is the practice of presence, right? I don't want to be thinking about the past. I don't want to be reviewing anything. I don't want to be predicting or anticipating or worrying about or fantasizing about the future or an outcome or a person or no, I just want to be fully in what I'm doing. So if I'm crisscross applesauce on the floor, my mind should be on my body, my breathing. You know, it should be on the fact that my booty's on the floor or if I'm sitting in a chair. Like it's bringing it back. Yeah, it's the awareness of bringing it back into self. So what I tell people to do that if you are just working out the mechanics of how to be present when meditating, because that's really what you're telling yourself is that I need to learn to have a presence of self, is it's not quiet your mind. Because when you realize that you're not your thoughts and your mind is only a piece of you, it's not the whole thing, you'll realize real quickly that it's really hard to sometimes in the beginning command your mind of what to do. So I usually tell people like to allow it in one ear and out the other. Like your parents used to tell you that all the time. You never hear me. It goes in one ear and out the other, right? Well, if it can work sometimes, you can make it work for you as well, right? If you have no problem having selective hearing, cough, cough, some of my gentlemen in the room. If you're having selective hearing and you hear what you want to hear, you know, it's okay. You can also do the same thing with your thoughts. I can allow a tangent in and let it go. And what I tell people a lot of times is when they're trying to intentionally sit down and go, I'm going to do this for five minutes. Pick pick a short time when you're first starting, first of all. Aren't one. Don't pick 30 minutes. Sure as shit, don't pick an hour. Pick five mm-hmm. minutes, 10 minutes max, because know that you're going to spend over half that time winding up and then settling down. So you're going to sit down and you're going to try to settle down. That's your wind up into meditation, right? We're trying to settle down. And then once you're done, you're going to start bringing yourself back. That's now your settle down out of, out of meditation. It's slightly backwards, but I promise you that's what it's going to feel like. You're going to be like, okay, hmm, calm myself. Don't think about anything. Shake my body out. Focus on my breathing, right? And then what's going to happen is you're going to be sitting in this void of blankness and you're going to be like, okay, you're going to get 0.5 seconds of that. You're going to get 0.5 seconds of it. And then all of a sudden it's going to be like red car. And you're going to like red car. I don't know anybody with a red car, but I do know somebody with the blue car. Oh, I did. Tammy did buy that blue Toyota. And then all of a sudden you're on this whole tangent about the movie skip when a dog was in the driver's seat of like the car in the movie. And you're going to be like, what? And then all of a sudden you're going to have like a presence of self moment to realize that you're overthinking and you're going to be like, oops. And then all you need to do is go, oops, and let it go. Just let that tangent fly out the other ear and let it go. It's not about saying, oh, we suck. We just wasted 30 minutes to a minute to a minute and a half. It's not about that. It's about getting comfortable releasing it. So, yeah, Yeah. things are going to fly in. It's, It's becoming aware of one of what's flying in. And two, having the awareness not to grasp onto it. So know in the beginning you're going to grasp onto it. Don't. Don't downplay yourself. Don't belittle yourself. Don't tell yourself that sucks. That's wrong. You're going to grab onto it. The faster you can let it go, the better, because then you're going to be watching it come in and you're going to see it come in and you're not going to grab it at all at some point. And you're just going to have this revolving door. And then you're going to notice that the less you grab onto the thoughts, the tangents, the wavelengths, the randomness that comes into your head the less often they will bombard your thoughts. And that's where the space is created. The space between you and your thoughts being the same thing is created when you are observing. You're not your thoughts, but you are the thing observing your thoughts. Mind-blowing, wild. You can pause, you can rewind, you can re-listen to that, you can write it down to journal about it later. You are not your thoughts, but you are the awareness that you are having thoughts. You are the observer of your thoughts, but you're not your thoughts. So a lot of times it's just that simple thing of like sitting down and realizing that you're doing it wrong because they taught you wrong. Like shame on them, but shame on you too, because you've given up on something because the idea of it is so hard that you haven't even been willing to give it a shot. 
Like that stupid poster you had in fifth grade with the basketball hoop and it says you miss 100% of the shots you don't take is 100% true right now. I am picturing in my head is 100% true that shady 80s, 90s poster that it has a picture of a hoop and an orange basketball and it's like you miss 100% of the shots you don't take and it was never in gym class. It was never in your health class. It was in like your language arts teacher's classroom and you're like, what is going on, Miss Deborah? Like... It is okay, but it is so true because the idea of doing something that is difficult, we psych ourselves out yes. and we just, we just decide all of a sudden we wake up and we're like, we can't do that. It's out of our scope because my brain's never quiet. I can't meditate. And you haven't even given it a shot. But it's rooted in that control. And that's the whole thing. It, it's just like you said, it's like when you're trying to control, this is, this is a trust the process because it is a process. Like you said, when you have this preconceived idea of how it's supposed to look and you got to create a space in your house and you've got to have your Zen den and you have to put aside a whole hour to do this. And then, oh, like you said, oh, I, I caught myself trying to control this or, or, or manipulate this or dissect this. Most people will go, now I have to start over. They will literally go, I have to start over. And then it's, okay, let me shake out my body. Let me do, like you literally are controlling a process or, an, or a, a concept, a practice that is meant to literally have an emphasis on awareness only. Observe, you are the observer of your thoughts. So you are just in a state of awareness without trying to manipulate, control, suppress, change, any of the things. But when you get on this journey, like we were saying, you know, people are like, oh, meditation is the path to enlightenment. You're like, oh, well, that's the first thing I got to learn how to do, right? It seems tangible. It seems like, duh. and then we make it this big, hard, messed up ass thing. And then we're like, well, this, this, then, well, then it ripples. And it's like, but they're not wrong. Where that no, comes from wrong. with the meditation is the path to enlightenment. Correct. You're not wrong because when you talk about channeling, you yes. are creating space and allowing the flow of information. Like he's yeah. just said, it's not about controlling what information comes in and what doesn't. It's about allowing it to flow through you and you can pick up on it. So creating that space between you yeah. and your thoughts, you and that information, you and that energy is what you are doing. And that's why it's the path to enlightenment because Correct. you're starting to detach. You're starting to have presence of, of, a, of self, of, of the now moment, all true. But when weaponized incorrectly, <laughs> dangerous, <laughs> like so dangerous. Well, and let's all be serious. It's a path. It's a journey, friends. We didn't come to the start of our path, not in dumpster fires, hot messes, and hypervigilance and go, we're just ready to rel relinquish our control and all the things today. And no, it's a process. So that's why it's like, I love the way that you explain it to people. And it's like, no, you got taught the end result backwards. And as soon as people have that aha moment, it's like, oh shit. So it's like, you're literally so focused on controlling that you're, hold on, that you're doing your spiritual journey right by getting meditation right. You are now sitting yourself in a space where you are trying to make parameters, limit yourself in a practice that, a practice that is to literally be limitless. It's literally doing everything in fucking reverse and then being pissed and frustrated and angry, which all totally normal emotions when we're trying to do something that we don't even have an awareness of. Again, like awareness, right? If you don't have an awareness of how to just be and someone goes, go just be. And you're like, what does that even mean? Yep. You're literally, you're skipping the steps. It's like baking a cake and, and you forgot the oven. Well, and that's the thing. And, and, and I'm going to blow whoever's mind is listening to this because <laughs> when we think meditation, we think crisscross applesauce. We think traditionally mm -hmm. oming our life away. And that's the way I say it, oming your life away. Right. However, there is a difference between classical or traditional meditation. Yeah and meditative brain states yes know the difference please learn and know the difference because yeah. not everybody chooses to to bring into their practice traditional sit down crisscross meditation style practices 
However, people will naturally transition their brain into meditative states. And a lot of times, the number one, like the average Joe Schmo, like Mr. Popsicle Man on the corner, is having this happen a lot of times, like during routine, nonchalant, things that you do that you do not need your thinking brain for. And before we get into what that actually means, it's important to realize that your brain has different wave states. It has different wavelengths. It has different states and presence of being, right? So our when we're like relaxing, typically we're in like the beta stage. You know what I mean? But then it's like, as you start to kind of dial back and calm down, we get out of our thinking, our active thought mind into where we're like up in our head, like I need to go do this. We're not task planning. We're not step by stepping. We're not anticipating, right? Maybe it's so routine. You don't need your mind to do it. It is a mindless thing you're doing. Folding laundry for a lot of my feminine or my mothers, folding laundry, doing the dishes, you know, driving cars, you know, things like that coloring, knitting, anything that's like a lot of rep repetition that is predictable repetition. A lot of people will say like, oh my God, I zoned out. And all of a sudden I was at my destination. Ha 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 ha. But I drove really safe the whole way there. It's not because you actually like completely zoned out to where like, we're like, holy Lord, we're worried about you. No, it's just that you drop down out of active brain function. And I know that sounds a little scary, but you'll do it naturally throughout the day. So you can get in a meditative state. Like a lot of times when you hear us talk, me and Keys will be like, you can meditate in many different ways. Grab a coloring book, zone out for a little bit play with some colored pencils. You know what I mean? Like you can do things like you'll watch me on my lives. Even when I'm not using cards, like for my energy reads, I'll be shuffling cards. It's because it's a repetitive thing. You'll notice some other channels. They'll scribble in a notebook, not writing down words, not actually taking notes. They'll just start scribbling. It's because you're pushing your mind into, I want to say like lower brain waves is the way that I want to say that. So it drops down from like beta to like alpha and then theta and then I think it goes delta and then maybe maybe one one below when you get into like REM sleep and stuff like that but it's like you're gonna drop down into into that lower state when you're channeling so when people are talking about that presence of self it's getting out of the overactive mind and into the passive receiving mind so yes. before we're gonna get into all of the meditative states I know we're gonna head there but like, I just want to keep in mind for people, if you're about to tune out of this podcast, because you're like, oh, fuck meditation. Meditation is not what you think it is. It doesn't have to be sitting crisscross applesauce. We'll talk about some beginner ways that you can like practice, like letting thoughts come in and letting them come out. But like, it's important to know it's not just about crisscross applesauce. Like yeah. you, you can go color in a coloring book yes. and relax and settle your mind down. And do something repetitive, folding laundry, doing dishes, driving the car, like whatever doesn't actually require thought to do it. That's why you'll you'll see a lot of people will watch TV and they'll be scrolling their phone at the same time. And they're just using TV as a background filler, like white noise. And then they zone out in what I call a doom scroll to yes. where you're not actually absorbing a single thing on any of your FYPs, your timelines, whatever feeds yep. you're scrolling through and then all of a sudden you blink and you're like four hours what did i even watch where am i you drop down into a meditative state and you just mm -hmm. went into basic cognitive function of being like i'm here i'm breathing like my heart's going that's it like you know what but like for real until something oh, yeah. really sparks your awareness right until yeah. you pass by farmer john flipping his tractor and you're like what and then all of a sudden you're like where how am I on here? Like, and then it triggers your thinking brain. And now you're out of your, you're out of your meditative state. Right. So I just think that's important because I feel like a lot of people don't realize the science that goes behind that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But no, but I mean, but that's a perfect example. Like everybody knows what the doom scroll is. Everybody knows what that is. A lot of people know what it's like to turn the, I, cause I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm that person. I'm that person when I'm in the house and like my <laughs> kids are, I'm serious. I'm like, can you please turn the TV on? I, what do I do? I tell everybody, I watch TV. I like the background noise. It's white noise to me. I don't care what it is. I don't care what you're listening to. Cause I'm not listening to it. I just need it because I'm over here doing me 
and you guys are over here doing you, and this is our, our buffer, it allows my brain to disconnect from over there and be over here. Yep. But those are relatable things to people. That's why I love when you give these examples, because sometimes, you know, I'm just being funny, but because we talk so much the way we do, because we have our friendship, I'm like, well, doesn't everybody just know this? And then, like, I listen to you break it down to people, but I, but, like, but I, I do love that all the time when people are like, well, what do you know? And I'm like, I love it because I remember the first time somebody told me, well, you know, you just got to meditate. And in my head, I'm literally like, fuck you. I am like, you, where, how? When is this taking place? Because at the time I'm like, I just booked this time so I could work on me in the, this space. And you want me to find like a whole other hour of my day to just do nothing? <laughs> so I'm telling you, but that's what makes like our conversations here real. Because like, that's where people are when they start to invest in themselves. They're like, oh my God, I want help. I need help, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody says the word meditation in your brain goes, I don't have enough time to get the shit done that I normally do. Like my, my, my me time is my 15 minutes in the shower. Cause I got to wash my ass. Right. Not even yeah. realizing that has the ability to be a meditative state. If you turn it into one, like yeah. not even realizing that more often than not, like you just said, zone out you, those words n resonate to people. I'm like fine. Trying to find my words today, but they resonate to people. I was standing in the shower and like the next thing I knew, oh shit, I've been in here for 20 minutes. I only meant to take a 10 minute shower because you disconnected from all of that other shit. So you actually know how to do it. You just didn't have the awareness that these things are in fact that because we have a label or a limit or an idea of it only looks like this. Just like you said, right. you know, the traditional ways, that is absolutely a way to do it. It is a beautiful way to do it. I can still tell you all these years later, that is still not how I do it because that's not realistic in my current reality. Well, and I just think it's so like important though, to really make sure that people understand there is a difference between disassociating yeah and meditative states because when yeah. i use zoning out i'm talking about relaxing zoning yeah. out not yeah. overload not not, not stress in the environment not bombarded with too much so we click it off right. that is different so if you are like overloaded and you click out that's not the type of meditation yeah. that's not yeah. even though your brain is doing a thing yes it's more of a trauma response at that point. Yeah. So, like, just know, have the awareness that that requires different steps to handle, to reground, to rebring your awareness into the physical it's moment. Is not meditation. Like, mean, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's dissociation. When someone's like, okay, just go to your happy place when that happens. Well, you have a preconceived idea what your happy place is and where you're going to draw your attention to to pull you out of a trauma response. That again is forced, controlled, and when I say manipulated, because you know what you're trying to achieve, it's not just that state of being an awareness. Now, a word from our sponsors. <laughs> if you are looking for a one-stop shop for all things spiritual, check out the website www.childofbalance.com We opened up a Get 5, Give 5 program. And it's all for referring friends and family. We know you guys do it. We want to say thank you because we are always seeing you send your trusted people our way. So visit the website and figure out how you can not only get 5 bucks for doing it, but give 5 bucks to your bestie. <laughs> visit www.childofbalance.com childofbalance.com there's no end date we're just launching it now to say thank you so if you want a one-stop shop for private spaces spiritual guidance and assistance mediumship mentorship private readings shadow work assistance it's all there if you are looking for a free tree of knowledge where you can learn esoteric wisdoms, breath work. You can learn about yourself, cultures, 
spiritual hygiene, spiritual practices, spiritual traditions, and you can just learn about almost anything under the sun spiritual for 100% free, check out the website. And you should become a member. If you're not already a member, www.childofbalance.com. It's 100% free. It'll never cost you money. We would never charge you money. The website is about assistance and community. Take advantage of it, fam. It's a great place to go to unlock your spiritual potential. www.childofbalance.com Right. And, like, I, like, we get to ask so many times about, like, you know, do we like guided meditations versus tones versus sounds versus you know drums and set like honestly it depends on the moment for me i know keys will tell you what she likes in a second but like when if you're an overthinker sometimes guided meditations can be distracting because Mm -hmm. you're either one annoyed at fuck by somebody's voice who's just not quite right And you're like, why did you choose to be a guided meditator? Like, what is wrong with you? Or you spend 45 minutes trying to find someone whose voice you can tolerate. And the next thing you know, you don't have time for that meditation now. Or it's the fact that you continuously are thinking about what the person is saying, thus cannot slip into a non-cognitive state to where your brain is actually relaxed and all the neurons don't need to fire at rate 101. So a lot of it is self-assessment first, like figure out what kind of person you is first, figure out like who you are, what, what you maybe struggle with just in your life. Like if you can't handle the TV being on this and somebody trying to talk to you at the same time, you might not be able to do a layered sound meditation like having chimes and a drum and a waterfall and this, and all of a sudden now there's a frequency in there. What is that? And then binaural beats that might be so freaking distracting for you that it may work for Tommy down the block, but it may not work for you. Meditative practices and any kind of practice is so individualistic that it's okay. If somebody who is very well known, who does this shit for a living or who you just trust hands you something and you go ill. No, oh my God, that didn't work for me. It's okay. You're not a failure. It's yeah. literally just the fact that you have a different brain. You have a different vessel. You have a different energy than the person who just handed you a tip or a trick that worked for them. And I feel like it's super important to realize that it doesn't matter what you choose to do. If you, if you're thinking like, I'm thinking like if you're thinking meditation as like a, has like a traditional style, like I'm going to sit down for 10, 15 minutes and be quiet, right? Like it doesn't matter what you choose to do, guided, unguided, this, that, whatever. If you feel like you can't be rushed, like, and I I mean this because some people don't like to be rushed, right? Or if you have trouble visualizing, don't do a guided meditation. Don't because you you won't be able to keep up with the pace of yes. when they're like, and now there's a tree, and now there's a house, and now there's a lady. Like, you're rushed well, because you're people. sitting here, and the people who are very vivid, you're probably painting a whole fucking landscape, and you're like, oh my god, there's a purple flower. And all of a sudden, in your ear, they're talking about two people in a in a house, and you're like, there's a house? And then you get lost, and then next thing you know, they're wrapping up the meditation, and you're just saying hi to the person they want you to meet. And you're like, what? Like, so sometimes if you're like an overdoer, that doesn't work. And if you feel like you can't be on a time crunch, don't do guided meditations because there's a time crunch to it. I always tell people like, pick a sound that you don't think you're going to get to the end to. And people are like, what do you mean? And I'm like, if you're planning to sit down for 10 minutes, pick a 45 minute sound so that if you get lost in it, good. The sound doesn't end and you don't get a commercial going white teeth like And you know what I mean? All of a sudden now we're in an Orbit commercial and you just completely ruined your channel because you're using YouTube because you're trying it before you pay for it. You know what I mean? Like be realistic, but it's also, it's also comes in that point where it's like, if you're into frequency, like, please don't jump to blasting your third eye opened. Like, it's not like the world's not going to come down on you. The devil's not going to swoop you up. You're not going to have creepy crawlies under your bed more than likely. But it's like, that's not actually helping you because we want you to be present in the moment. 
We don't need to shoot you into astral. We don't need to shoot you into an out of a body. We don't need to push you to the cosmos so that you have some massive awakening. And then when you see all those clickbaity shit that's like three minute, you know, penal gland activator, you'll never be able to ungo back to what, be careful, so dangerous, like, you know, use at your own risk. And you see that shit on YouTube all the time. Don't even lie. Maybe that's not the one the beginner clicks on. Like, because that's not where you want to start in your presence of self. We're not yeeting you to the moon, Armstrong. We want you to stay present and rooted in the ground. We want you to stay in your body. We don't want you to be yeeting out because a lot of times that scares people. That feeling of slipping into another realm, into another dimension, into another waveform sometimes is startling if you've never done it before, if you've never consciously done it on purpose. So as you go down from beta to like alpha and you start having that relaxed brain state where you're going from like, I don't know, 20 something, you know, hertz down to like a 13 hertz, your brain is going to be like, what just happened there? And that slip feeling, you're going to be like, whoa. And then all of a sudden now you startled yourself back into a 26 hertz frequency brainwave and now we're not really relaxing now we're not really now we're playing ping pong with our thinking brain so it's okay to take the baby steps you need and not feel like you need to rush not feel like you need to panic the idea is relaxing so a lot of times like i tell people like this is the funniest thing because people will always be like i try to meditate but then i fall asleep change your body position why are we laying down right we don't need to lay down I'm guaranteed, like, you put 99.9% of people sitting upright in a chair, you're not falling asleep. You're not falling asleep. And if you do, guess what you're going to do? You're going to fall your ass out of that chair, and I guess you're not doing that again. Like, it's when we try to lay down that we fall asleep, right? Right. If you find yourself, like, and, like, snoozing, like, put your body in not quite a relaxing place. Like, if your goal is to not fall asleep, Like, you know what I mean? Like if your goal is to not fall asleep and this is a repetitive problem, even though sometimes you might just need that sleep and you should just be thankful for the fact you got that little nap. Like if we're trying to be productive, maybe sit up, maybe put a pillow up, like put your feet on the ground. Like there are so many other things you can do to make yourself not as comfortable. So we take a four hour snooze. I know. I got like I went so many places. I gotta go backwards for a second. I know. I went forward. so many places. No, because, no, this is fantastic because like I wish I would have had you as I'm listening. Oh guy, guy. We're gonna have a brief story time. <laughs> yes. I, I can't impress upon enough what she just said about Do not do your first meditation and go to YouTube and choose the third eye. Don't do it. Just don't. Don't. I speak from experience. I thought that was a good idea because somebody was like, well, you should really do this. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, No, don't do that. And not in a scary way, in a like really intense kind of way, because you will absolutely pull yourself out of what you're doing. Because you don't even, you're, like I said, you're learning what awareness is. You're learning this and that. And I mean, I did this, but like, you are spot on. I sat in a space that was like, and I don't mean like, I mean, like I literally sat in an area of my house that was not my bedroom. It wasn't my recliner, but I forcefully made myself sit on the ground because I knew if I laid down, I'd probably fall asleep. So I knew better than to do that. But yeah, don't jump there. That is, I'm just listening to you say that. And I'm like, no, you are like 1000% correct. Because and everyone wants to skip steps. We all know this. We say this all the time. Everyone comes to us and they want to skip steps. But that's my thing. Right. You don't know what you don't know. So when no one told you there were steps to begin with, you're just like, where do I start? And they're like, oh, this third eye meditation is great. And I'm like, oh, okay. No, no. I mean, it was great. Until I ripped myself out of it and was like, what the hell just happened? And then I'm like, phone a friend, phone a friend. I'm confused. And then the phone a friend didn't answer their phone. So I'm like, well, this was fun. Now we're just panicking. So I don't think this is for me because what the hell was that? And like now that now it's great. That that's a good thing now, but like in beginner, no ma'am. Well, but it's just kind of needed, especially when you're first starting, like 
the whole idea is just to calm down, relax, and just be. <laughs> we're not trying to meet Jesus Christ. We're not trying to go up to D7, D14. We're not trying to have out-of-body experiences. We're not trying to meet these these larger than life. Like, no, that that's your, if that's your first goal, then we're going to need to sit down and realistically discuss yeah. why you think that that's where you need to be right now Correct. and kind of have a little baby coming to Jesus meaning to where you realize that that's actually like step 47 for the beginner and that's not step one although not everybody goes step by step through their journey because everyone's journey is different but when it happens naturally then that's whatever when you start pushing to level 50 and you like can't even organize your sock drawer like because your life is so chaotic let's not add more unstructured chaos to it like we don't need to yeah we don't need to bust open the veils of the beyond if you can't sit quietly for a couple minutes and this leads me into my other thing and i just posted a video about this so this is so funny that this is even the topic we're talking about but there is a difference between meditation and sitting in the power in my yeah. mind the way i teach it so i teach it differently there is a definite difference between meditation and sitting in the power if you are if you are meditating right you have a 50 50 thing you you can do it in your room if you want to you know, you can do it in your bedroom. You know, I always tell people if that's the only time that you are making yourself available and you're using meditation to make yourself available, don't choose your room. I choose, I tell people if you're sitting in the power, definitely don't choose your bedroom. If you are making yourself available, don't choose your sanctuary. Don't choose the place you sleep. Choose the living room. Choose, you could choose the freaking bathroom if you wanted to. Not very comfortable. I wouldn't suggest sitting on the toilet, but you know, you do you. Like, pick a room in the house where you're going to be okay. Like I'm going to be okay. If something were to try to contact me in, you know, the spare bedroom or when I'm in the office, the problem that people run into, and especially if you think you might have mediumistic abilities, spirit communication abilities, right? You see dead people, you hear dead people, you feel like you have that ability slightly more in tune, right? I tell anybody to have this rule of thumb, but like for the people who suspect that they might be able to talk to dead things, definitely don't pick your bedroom. Because what happens is when you're picking a meditation time, and especially when you're consistent with it, or when you're choosing to sit in the power, fantastic thing to do, suggest everybody do at least a couple minutes of sitting in the power just so you can feel the difference. But we'll get into that some other podcast. Like, but don't choose the bedroom, dude. Like, because what's going to happen is you're you're making yourself available for your guides, your team. And then when we add dead people in, maybe you know them, maybe you don't know them. Maybe they just saw you in a receptive state and we're like, holy shit, Martha's ready. And then comes flying in. What's, like, what's going to happen? You have a whole precedence you didn't mean to. And what's going to happen? <laughs> What's going to happen is that you're going to be, you're going to then try to go to bed and they're going to be like, oh, she's in that receptive state. And then they're going to accidentally try to bother you because they're just trying to communicate with you. And when you're tired, your, your brain is relaxed. Your body is relaxed. You're trying to go to sleep. A lot of times people will experience disturbances in sleep. They can't fall asleep. They can't stay asleep. They're being bothered, poked, pushed. They hear people whispering, talking, right? Like, and then they start freaking themselves out because what we don't know we're afraid of. So then what happens is that our fear kicks in and now, you know, dead Edna is must be a demon level 40 who's here to take my soul. And it's like, that's not always the case. Are those things probably real? Sure. Like, is everything that's trying to get your attention out to kill you? No. So it's like one of those things where it's like to the untrained person, that's what I say to the untrained, to the unaware, to the beginner person, like no hate, we've all been there, but like, that's not what you want to start with because what's going to end up happening is that, especially with sitting in the power, and I'm not going to go crazy with it, but meditation too. If you pick the same location every single time, regardless of your intention, what you are doing is you're creating a hot spot. So you are pumping energy into one location, whether that be literally the, the three by three square that your butt sits on, or it's the chair, or it's the room, or it's the whatever you will create a hot spot. So every time you go there, it'll be easier and easier to not only slip into a meditation, it'll be easier to sit in the power, you'll vibe higher, things will start to occur, especially when you do it on routine or with consistency, the same time, same day, like that kind of a thing. 
it'll happen. So what ends up happening is that they can anticipate that your ass is going to sit down at four o'clock every single day for 15 minutes. And this is their chance. Like, right. Yeah. And then that's what's going to happen is that you're going to have things start showing up. Your team's going to show up. Your guides are going to show up, show out. Exactly. Because you're making yourself available. Beautiful. But what I find is funny is that people who start making themselves available. And I had this when I first started making myself available. Like all of a sudden you can now go throughout your day and you're not as bombarded by things. And you're like, is something wrong with me? No, bitch. Nothing's wrong with you. And it's okay. But like, ho, that just ain't it. Nothing's wrong with you. It's just the fact that they know you're going to be available at four o'clock and they can yeah. get your whole ass attention. So they're not pining for your half ass attention now, unless it's super important. Your team's a little different. Your team might always be up your ass. Just depends on what you got going on. But especially when it comes to dead people, like if you have a routine, if you have a this and they've been watching you, they got their number from a dead buddy. Like, you know, your guides are like, not now. She'll sit down at four o'clock. Like you all of a sudden have this gatekeeper. You're going to be like, why can I all of a sudden start functioning as a human being? Why do I, why am I not bothered when I'm at the grocery store? Why am I not bothered in school or at work or at this or in the gas station or this? like, right. And now all of a sudden I'm not being bombarded. But then when I sit down at four o'clock, it's like, boom, who the hell is Edna? Who the hell is Jeremy? Why is my team showing me this? Why are we traveling over here? What does this mean? Why are all these images coming up? It's going to start happening faster and faster and faster. You're creating an energy hotspot. You don't think that's the case? Take your ass to a different location one day. Don't fucking tell anybody. And then try to do the same meditation you do in your hotspot in a new location. It'll be the same but slightly different. And you will notice the less energy available to you to use. And it's so wild. Because you'll eventually start with hot spots and then you can have enough presence of self, enough practice, enough whatever, where you can take your shit wherever you want to go. But for the beginner, hot spots are wild. And you don't realize you're creating a hot spot because people don't tell you that, right? Routine creates hot spots. The same reason that old homes have residual energy, because the yeah. same thing happened every day and hospitals and this and churches and insane asylums and all this crazy stuff, boarding houses and stuff like this are all haunted with residual energy. They're creating hot spots, energetic hot spots of absorbed energy. You are doing the same thing. And when you sit your ass in the same chair every single day and you have presence of self and you sit in the power and you bridge communication and you charge the elements that are around you and the objects that are around you, they're going to work in your favor. They become your fucking tools. You create a sanctuary of which you tell people you're allowed to contact me here, whether you realize it or not. It also becomes your boundary. So when we're talking about being bothered in the middle of the night, oh, someone poked me, someone scratched me, I feel like someone's whispering, I feel like I'm being stared at, someone's standing by the edge of my bed, like all of these things are common things that we hear people bring to us all the time when they're first developing. And then their first question is, should I be worried? Should I be afraid? And we start breaking down your practices. And it's just that you meditate in your bedroom and you throw cards in your bedroom and you do this and your altars in your bedroom and all this stuff is happening. And it's like, You've accidentally created a hotspot with no boundaries in your room. Now it's no longer your sanctuary. Now it's your workplace. So it's yeah. like, then we have to kind of wind back that bus and be like, we need to set some boundaries here. You're not allowed to contact me during X, Y, Z. I need to sleep. You leave me alone. Like, right. Like these things are all really important, but something as simple as meditation can create a hotspot, whether you realize it or not, depending on your intention, what you're doing, how much energy you're throwing around, like, right. All of that stuff, who you're allowing to be in your space, who you're receiving during meditations has the potential to have like this perfect storm of energetic activity that you're going to then have to deal with. And yeah. it's just that one of those things like you don't realize that that's what's happening until you're in it, until you're in it. And then you're like, whole oh, buddy, it's just because nobody tells you right. that you're creating hot spots. So like but for the beginner, yeah. you just want to start with good practices off the rip. You don't know what you don't know, but now that you know, you can't pretend you didn't know. So if you listen to the podcast and you come on and you're like, oh, this is happening. I'm like, did you watch this podcast? And you're like, yeah, I did. And I'm like, so you created the hotspot anyway? Like, and it's okay, but that's that accountability. You know what I mean? That's that accountability because there's so much that just goes into all of that. That it's like, we want to create separation we want to create boundaries it's not so much an on off switch although it has been described as that throughout the ages generations whatever like time periods like you just want to have good boundaries and to tell things when they're allowed to bother you and when they're not 
I give my guides, my team, my court, whatever, my counsel, a whole lot more freedom. They can bombard me whenever they want to bombard me. And if I can't handle it, I'm going to be like, leave me alone right now, right? And sometimes I still get whacked over the head, you know, with whatever they want to tell me because it's that important, right? And other times they're like, all right, cool, and they fuck off, like, in the best way possible because they get it. You know, it's like one of those things where it's just like, but it takes a while to get there. Boundaries are hard, especially energetic boundaries for the things you cannot see are hard in the beginning because you can't see them, right? So you're like, did it work? Did it not work? And you're like, I don't know. I think it feels like it works. And it's like all this questioning games. So it's like when you're starting these things, even though we're not talking about this kind of stuff, it goes hand in hand. I mean, how many people he's ask us, like, do I need to protect myself when I meditate? It's up to you. I know people who always put up a bubble, a circle or whatever, when they try to sit down in the power, who always try to bridge communication, channeling, mediumship, whatever. And they always put up protection. And I know some people who are like, no, I'm, I'm in my space. They have no right to be here if they're not, if they're not X, Y, Z, and they don't choose to do it. Right. It's just whatever works for you. But that's another form of your boundary, right? Like that's another form of you enforcing not only energetic hygiene, but your boundary. What works for me? What doesn't? Now, a word from our sponsors. (laughs) If you are looking for a one-stop shop for all things spiritual, check out the website, www.childofbalance.com. For those of you who truly appreciate handmade products, we have a handmade shop. Everything is made to order, blessed, saged, and sent out as quick as possible. We have anything from handmade sounds for meditation to chakra chain macrames to tree of life macrames with inlaid crystals to herbal blends like bath teas and dump and go specials to road opener mixes to kits and oils and so much more for those of you who enjoy taking spiritual classes and courses but maybe can't fit it into your busy schedule we have self-study courses and everything can be found in the handmade shop the website is about assistance and community take advantage of it fam it's a great place to go to unlock your spiritual potential www.childofbalance.com correct i was gonna say you know something for me that i found super helpful is like as a mom right like I'm on the go 100,000 miles per hour all the time. So when I was trying to learn, learn, I say that, learn how to meditate the right way, there wasn't really a right way. And something for me was always like, and I'm sure anybody else who's a parent will, will resonate with this. You're like, I just want like some peace and quiet, right? Because your brain is literally taught as a parent to function on balancing all the the chaos, the unstructured energy, everybody needing your attention, this, this, and this. I also used to just kind of, and I'm going to say zone out and probably disassociate is probably the word I'm going to choose to use first, when I would be in the car by listening to music when I was by myself. But then I realized one day, what if I just turn the music off? Like that simple, right? What if I just turn the music off and I'm going to drive in silence? Like, bitch, you always bitch and it's like, you never get peace and quiet. Now, not only did you jailbreak and get out of the house without the kids, but why don't you just turn the music off? You don't need to play your playlist right now. The level of how easy it became to sit in that awareness and get into that meditative state all while doing a basic activity. Like when you know how to drive, like you're kind of on autopilot. Like your physical vessel has the awareness it needs to have, but that th- those brain waves, that 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 state of mind, when it's got nothing else, you would be surprised how fast you can get into that meditative state. And then it's like, I, and I'm not even gonna lie, eventually I'd get pulled out because my phone would ring or something would happen or you know whatever. Then I'd be like, oh my god, I gotta call my friend. I don't know my friend. Like all this stuff that just came to me while I was driving. And but it was like unreal that all the things I tried really hard to do and that's why I said that 
tried really hard to do because I thought this is how it was supposed to look. I was limiting myself and it was really that easy. So if you're somebody who really has that hard time disconnecting from everything because it's your normal, when you sit down and go, I'm going to disconnect from everything, I'm going to put my headphones on, you're really actually controlling that how you're disconnecting, which is keeping you out of that, uh, that state of awareness in the first place. So I just wanted to share that because like I said, I was floored how easy it was to literally be like, oh, I'm just going to go to the store. Or I'm running to the ATM or I'm running here or there and purposefully like with, with a purpose, not turn on my music, not turn on my radio purposely go, Oh, I was going to call my friend, but maybe I should wait because I haven't been in that state or I haven't sat in the power or I haven't, you know what I mean? This, this, or this, it's not hurry up and go get this done. And the second I took that expectation off the table of let me just enjoy this quiet time, this time by myself, all of the things almost converged and it was the easiest, it was the easiest thing ever. I didn't have to think about it. That's what made it easy. It was one conscious decision to Bitch, you always complaining about all the noise. Can you sit in silence? Like, you know what I'm saying? It was almost like I right. challenged, can you actually sit in silence or are you the problem? It's you. And it was just like, whoa, like almost mind blown type of stuff where it's like, I, like I said, I always wish like your knowledge in this area is so helpful to people because I wish somebody would have told me like, you're the problem. It's you, like you're getting in your own way. You're overcomplicating this because you think it has to look like something that it doesn't. Well, and it's just so funny that you say that because it's like, really, nobody ever taught me how to meditate. Nobody's ever taught me how to sit in the power. Nobody like I literally just oopsied and figured it out myself. And then I did have a friend at one point who was very large into meditating and meditative states as far as coloring and drawing and stuff like that to where he would just be like, yeah, you know, why don't you just color instead? Like, like he would just tell me why you just color instead, but I've never actually been like trained. So I just think it's so funny. It's like, it it doesn't have to be hard though. Right. Like you just got to find what works. And a lot of times when you go to sit down, just getting like all the way back to the beginning when we were talking about like, it's not about quieting your mind. It's just about letting things through, right? Mm-hmm. And not grabbing onto any thought. Sometimes, a lot of times that we run into is it's the expectation of what yes. we're supposed to gain from meditation yes. or what's supposed to happen or, you know, what, what's what going on over here, Right. Like, and it's like, but that's not the point, you know? And a lot of times I'll hear people say, I get it all the time, especially in mentorship. Um, when I sit down with people and we're working on abilities and we're working on quiet meditations and of sitting in the power and self-awareness and stuff like that, as far as our ability goes, they'll be like, well, I meditated. It was kind of hard. It was nothing really happened for the first three times. And then it's like something cool really happened. And then I went to go meditate again and then nothing happened again. And I was like, well, it's not that nothing happened. It's just that you had one really cool moment. So now yep. we had an expectation that we're getting better, right? We're getting better because the first time apparently wasn't yep. right, right? We're getting better. Uh, air quotes for those you can't see. And then yep. all of a sudden it's like, and, but now we're here again and now we're doing it wrong because we didn't get it a second time. And it's like that self-judgment is so limiting one, but yes. expectation can stop everything. So in the beginning, it's not about receiving anything. You shouldn't be looking for a color, an image, uh, a figure, a guide, a, a character. You shouldn't be looking for any of that because it's not important. The important part is how many how many times did I find myself grasping onto a thought? How many times did I let that thought go? And it doesn't even mean quantitatively, like don't give me a freaking number, you're overthinking. It's Correct. just like the awareness of that I'm catching myself sooner when I get off on a tangent. Oh my God, I think I sat down for half the meditation and I didn't have a tangent and nothing happened. Congratulations, you're creating space that is gorgeous. Correct. And for the people who are trying to figure out, well, how do I get there? Because I don't know where to place my focus. A lot of times, the easiest place to relax, especially the nervous system, when it comes to relaxing the body, because hello, we're in a vessel. It's not all about the energy, it is about the physical body relaxation as well. Sit in a comfortable position. Sit up. Don't lay down, you lazy ass. Sit up. 
You can lean against you can lean against your bed, you know, sit in the floor, sit in a chair. When you're first, sorry. You guys can't see but Keith mm-hmm. was spit out her drink. But it's like it's one of those things, but it's like sit up. Because you you want to be present. I don't want you falling asleep in the beginning. Yeah. We can get down into deep minutes, but we're just doing a presence of self. So yeah. we don't I don't want you to lay down. Sit up. Right. And then it's like instead of keeping our focus on, oh my God, there's a thought coming in. Don't grab onto it. Don't grab onto it. And now we're creating all of this dialogue in our in our mind, our anxiety dialogue. We're filling the space we're attempting to create. Not helpful, right? So we're going to take that awareness, that attention, and place it on our breathing. One of the easiest things you can do is place it on our breathing. You can take deep breaths. For those of you who have not done breath work with me or Miss Keys, For my feminines, your boobs should not be hitting your chin. They should not be poking your eye out. We want to breathe down into our belly. We want our belly button to be moving front to back, forward and backward, out past our breasts and back down close to the spine. We want our abdomen moving. We want to be deep lung breathing. We don't want to be shallow breathing. When we're shallow breathing, we're only breathing from the top half of our lung. It's one really awful for your health, for your lung health, for like you're at a risk of like pneumonia and all these other things because you're not actually using all of your lung to breathe. But there's something that happens when you fill your lungs with deep oxygen that comes from like all the way down in the belly and that's time lapse that is created between breaths. It actually you have to be careful. That's why we tell people don't start with intense breath work. Don't be doing like this long yogi style, like to where we're doing all these short, fast repetition, deep breaths. Like you will get lightheaded and pass out. It's because your brain is not used to that type of oxygen, blood flow, any of it. You will zonk out. So start with something really simple. Do a four beat breath in for four beats. Pause for four beats, out for four beats. Pause for four beats, in for four beats. Pause for four beats. And just do it and count. One, two, three, four. Breathe. One. Like, count it to yourself. That's why we talk about, you'll hear me say it, we do a mindful practice until we no longer need the mind to practice. Breath work is one of those things. You will count your breaths until you get so used to that style of breathing of awareness of sense of self that you won't need to count the breaths now you're just doing the thing and you can be a mindless practice right but we need to instill the mind first so it's a lot easier to i don't want to say trick but like trick our mind into a meditative state a calming of the nervous system right when we're counting rather than when we're like oh god no don't do this now all of a sudden we have all these words one, two, three, four, because that within itself is rhythmic. The numbers are predictable. It goes to the same amount every single time. That within itself is a mindless practice. Whether you realize it or not, you do it enough on repetition, it's a mindless practice. And it's one of those things like, for those of you who maybe are past the counting your breath part, like maybe you're just a little bit beyond that. And you start there and then, I don't know, some shit happens and you get off, you get off track, right? And you correct yourself and you just want to go further. You can place your attention, you know, on the way your body feels, the vibration your body has. You can place it on a chakra center. I would, I would tell you to pick a lower Dantian chakra center, a solar, a sacral, a root chakra or anything below the root, you know, outside the physical vessel. You can do that if you want to. I would not suggest for the beginner that you would be focusing on your throat, your crown, your brow. You know, I wouldn't focus up there because we're trying to revert the thinking from the headspace. So let's not place our attention on the headspace. I know a lot of times you'll hear like, well, if you cross your eyes, you look at the center of your forehead in between your eyebrow, you're looking at your third eye. Like, that's fantastic. But that's still a practice that's like third eye driven to where we think our third eye is our only important chakra. And you're wrong. And especially when it comes to channeling and your clear abilities and the things that you actually want to open up, whether you realize it or not, you need all of your energy centers all of your chakras, all of your meridians, you want your life force, your chi, your prana, you want all of that working 
in a good, stable, balanced position, place, clear, you know, of energy stagnancies. So you want to utilize them. You want to use those filters, those funnels, like you want to use all that stuff. So placing the awareness outside the headspace, outside the mind is fantastic because you're not your mind, you're not your thoughts. So it's placing it on the on the place of being, you know, and that's always a great place to start. I just feel like a lot of people kind of get in that in between of like, well, it didn't work. The key is it's not, it doesn't have to be anything. And I tell people to journal what they get. And I, it does not need to be a page long. It doesn't need to be paragraphs. Put the date on it. If you're having a problem, an issue or whatever, before you sit down, write it down. I'm pissed the fuck off. Perfect. You know, August 14th, 2024. Fantastic. Do your meditation, do your sitting in the power, do your whatever, and then write anything you feel called to afterwards. Felt full body tingles. I I did not have a single thought while I was meditating. I thought four thoughts, but I caught myself, right? Oh my God, I saw the color blue. Like whatever it is, whatever you get, like I thought someone tapped me on the shoulder. I had got cold chills. I got goosebumps. Like whatever it is, my leg fell asleep. It doesn't matter whatever it is. Write it down. And it's like, do that repetitive. Yeah, because you know what? It's just the art. I know what, I know you know what I mean, but like people will have that response, but it's just the art of creating that flow. I want whatever you pick up. I want you not to judge it. And I want you to write the fuck down because you need to get it out of your vessel. We're creating the pathway of, of, of information of energy going from inside your vessel to outside your vessel. And you're not judging it on the way out. We're not editing it. We're not, you know, censoring it. None of that shit. It's your journal. Nobody's reading it. You're not posting it online. You're not sharing it with anybody. You can be like, this is the dumbest thing ever. I hate doing this. Day four, you hated it. Write it down and then move on. You know what I mean? And it's one of those things. And if you do it consistently, six days a week, do not miss more than two days in a row because you will be breaking the pattern in the beginning. You need to keep with a pattern to create a new behavior, right? So like, yeah. what was it like? Two weeks, two weeks and you've instilled... 21 days. Thank you. 21 days. And you've instilled a new pattern, a new thing for you, a new habit. Fantastic. So you need to be fairly consistent, right? So if you're giving up before the 21 day mark and you're going, it doesn't work. You just haven't given enough effort. I love you. We can honor that you're not at the place to do it yet. And that's fine. You can put it down and pick it back up, but know that it didn't fail you. You failed it because you failed yourself because you didn't try. And that's the hard part is that you're going to do things that are uncomfortable in this whole journey, in this lifetime, in your existence, and you're going to have to suck at the fuck up cupcake. And it's going to be okay because that's where you actually grow. You don't yeah. grow in your comfortability. You, I'm not going to tell you to go do something and you're going to be like, this was so easy. Ha ha. I learned so much. No, you're going to fall on your ass. You're going to trip. You're going to make yeah. mistakes. You're going to not do it right. And they're going to be like, oh my God, wow, that actually worked out in the end. I'm so glad I kept with that. Right. And if, if meditations like that is not for you, that's fine. But give it enough time so you can actually form an opinion on it. And that's the whole point. Because I've never met anybody who has really given it the full weight of time who cannot say it hasn't done anything for them. And I'm not saying it's like blown open doors. I'm not. But no, but it hasn't done anything. Bullshit. You did not give it at least 21 days. You did not give it a couple months. You, you did not. not the process. The process knows you weren't trusting it. Right. And that's why nothing happened exactly like so it's like you got to be easy with yourself and easy with whatever you're implementing and it, it that bridges far from meditation that bridges into everything when you're trying a new tool like cards pendulums tarot what, whatever it is like ruins like whatever it is you want to do automatic writing you want to do this it doesn't matter what it is you want to ride a bicycle today like you have to give yourself time to adjust to change, to learn, to grow. Like it's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to feel like you didn't do it right, but you need to tell those voices that tell you that you're doing it wrong to just shut the fuck up and just yes. continue to do it. Because I guarantee you, whatever you're doing wrong will sort itself out because you're going to get to a point where you're going to look back at your journal. And you're going to go the last three weeks. I've had the same results. Let me switch something up. And you're going to switch one thing. Like I hear this one thing at a time. If you switch more than one thing at a time, you you're never going. know what the fuck the problem was. and You don't know what worked and what didn't always switch one thing at a time. Don't switch more than one thing in a week. Like if you're really yep. tracking your shit, like, and it's okay if you switch one thing, it didn't work and you're going to switch it back and then switch something else. That's fine. You're switching something back. That's fine. 
but don't switch four things. Don't change the location, sure. the body position, the time, the sound, the, the like five things and then go, that worked. Great. Now replicate it. You can't because you don't know which one actually was the thing that was the trigger. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, you're not a machine and you have to realize that. And I tell people that all the time in our private spaces, especially in mentorship and shadow work, you're not a machine. I can't, I can't push in a button and all of a sudden, woo, you're on to your next thing. That's not how that works. Like you spent your whole life becoming you. Guess what? It's going to take you more than a week to unbecome what you've became. I know that's shitty. All of these things. You are replacing a bad thing. Yeah. Like you are replacing a bad habit. Unlearning. Yeah. You're replacing a bad habit with a better one. Fantastic. You were an overthinker. You got up in your head. Things were hard. You had trouble settling down. Now you're inserting a moment, a moment in your day where you can have calm, peace, anxiety-free, distraction-free. Do not go into any sort of meditation with a purpose if you have your distractions by you. You are setting yourself up for failure and your distraction includes your cell phone. Put it on mute for 10 minutes. It'll survive. I don't care if someone's in cardiac arrest, they will survive. I know that's shitty, but that's so not, (laughs) no, but that's just the truth because it's like, it's like, you know what? Like, that's really the truth. The odds of any of that shit actually happening to where it's a stage 12 emergency are so far and few between that it's just like, and if it is, you know what, then you call somebody who has, who, you know, is like, Hey, I will be unavailable for 15 minutes. I told X, Y, Z to call you if there are any issues. Click. That is as simple as it can be. You clear your schedule. You clear your time. You move away from distractions, dogs, birds, pets, kids, hubby, TV. Move away from it all. Turn your phone on silent. Do not disturb. Turn your phone off. Whatever you need to do. Put on headphones. Zone out to all the distraction. But move yourself apart from it. Do not put yourself in chaos and go, I don't know why I can't settle down out of the chaos. You've never left it. You're trying to reinvent the whole energy while transmuting outside energy, right? Like that's wild for the beginner. That's a problem. So it's like one of those things where it's like, remove yourself distraction free. Like if you can't make yourself distraction free, then you have more problems in your life than sitting down to meditate. And you got to ask yourself, am I meditating to escape what the fuck my life is right now? Or am I meditating to better myself? Because meditation is not a fix all. And anything done in excess can be poison because that's literally what poison is. Anything more than needed can be poison. Meditating for hours and days and this as a form of escape is not healthy either. I don't care how great the practice is intended to be. You're escaping something. You're avoiding something. You're disassociating with a positive practice, which is still a negative outcome. (laughs) Which is still a negative outcome. And it's like somebody has to say it. Yes, but it's true because like you said, there's a difference between finding a state of awareness and dissociate. They are not the same. Because you got to remember that even though sitting down for a couple hours, you know, every day and whatever seems like a good idea, anything done in excess, aka too much is out of balance and the key is balance in everything. So it's not just that we need to meditate our life away. And you'll hear me say, oh, my life away. That's not necessarily it. It's making ourselves present in the moment. It's giving ourselves a time for relaxation, a time that's just ours, free from distraction, free from energetic overload, free from emotional overload, free from other people's problems, right? Where we're just with our own energy, our own teams, and we're doing something for us, right? Yes. So I really hope that this helps anybody who has been thinking about meditation or maybe wanted a new perspective on meditation while this was not necessarily your how to meditate, although we did cover some different troubleshoots and different ways of starting a meditative practice. This is more just redefining maybe what meditation might actually mean to the untrained, to the beginner, to the casual everyday person. Alrighty. Thank you guys so much for listening in, tuning in. Thank you for joining us on the Spiritual Roundtable, where we just really get right down in it, no BS, and we just give you exactly what you need to hear. 
Not always what you want to hear, but definitely what you need to hear. Thank you for joining myself and Miss Keys of Wisdoms 369 for our talk today. <laughs> and we hope you join us next week where we have more straight talk coming right your way. And if you are not a member of the website, but you enjoy conversations like this and free knowledge and learning, we have a free tree of knowledge and you should check it out. Become a member. It's 100% free and you'll find it on www.childofbalance.com. Remember, as you go through this journey, please remember you are to feel your way through everything. Do not stop. Do not make yourself smaller. And always continue to be unapologetically and authentically you. Because the world needs more of that.